Favor over your future. Favor on your faculties. Favor on your friends. Oh, Y'all ain't hearing me. God, our Father, how we love you. We receive that for the hand that we're holding. Now, God, I pray that you would bless this hand. Uh, gently squeeze this hand as confirmation. And that the worst is behind them and, and that the best is yet to come. Squeeze it one more time as confirmation that their ladder shall be greater. Squeeze it for the third time. It's, it's a confirmation that better things are coming, that what's to come is better than what was. And so we seal this in the name of Jesus. I, I press encouragement, we press strength into this, the hand of my neighbor. And now, God, as we come to hear your word, I pray in my weakest hour that you'd be my greatest source of power. I pray, God, that you would hide me behind the cross so much so that your people would see and hear none of me but all of thee. Get glory in this house, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn to your neighbor, say something nice to him, make him smile real big. While you're still standing, grab your Bibles, the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, while you're still standing, Hebrews chapter 4, uh, commencing at verse 14 and concluding at verse 16. And while you're finding Hebrews 4, 6, 4, 14, let me thank God for our pastors who are here, pastors Robertson and Richardson and their wives and family. I'm grateful for our sons and daughters on the front row and members of our diaconate ministry, those men and women that labor in ministry with me, this marvelous music ministry, uh, these outstanding ushers, media gatekeeper, nurses, all of you, my Heavenly Father's children who are with us today. I thank God so much for, for you as we launch uh, evangelism, evangelism emphasis. I want to share um, uh, this text with you today, Hebrews chapter 4, commencing at verse 14 and concluding in verse 16 from the King James translation. These words are recorded, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us, therefore, come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Turn to your neighbor, look him or her in the eye, and say, Neighbor, I'm staying with the Lord. Amen. That's what I want to talk about. I'm staying. I'm staying. Others may go. Ah. Uh, but as for me and me, I'm staying. I can't speak for my household sometimes. I know what Joshua said, but I'm staying uh, with, with the Lord. Us as you may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. The other day, uh, I was flipping uh, through a Christian magazine, and I ran across an article that had a caption scrolled across the top of it that arrested my attention. Uh, the caption uh, on this particular article said, uh, Christianity losing, secularism winning. And that, 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 that's what it said. On this, that's what it said. It, it said that Christianity was losing and secularism was winning. When I, when I started reading this article in, uh, in detail, it stated that the Pew study asked 2,973 individuals nationwide what was their present religion, if any. You know, were they Protestant, Roman Catholic, Mormon, Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, atheist, agnostic, something else, or nothing in particular? 
And interestingly enough, the data revealed that the number of Americans identified with being a Protestant was only 48%. That number, 48%, was down from 53% just a few years ago when the same amount of people was asked the same exact question. The data also revealed that the number of Americans who stated that they did not identify with any religious group whatsoever not only was increasing, but that number had increased so rapidly until currently one-fifth of the entire United States public and one-third of adults under the age of 30 stated that they were religiously unaffiliated. I, I want you to hear what I just said. I, I said that the number of persons who now state that they are religiously unaffiliated, that number has grown so fast and so rapid until one-fifth of the United States public and one-third of every individual 30 years and under now state that they have no affiliation to any kind of religion. That, 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 that just took me by surprise. In, in, in fact, what I found interesting even beyond that was that beneath that article, it displayed two graphs and one graph was trending up and the other graph was trending down. And the graph that was trending upward uh, was the number of persons who were unaffiliated with any religious group whatsoever. But to my dismay, uh, the graph that was trending down uh, was the one that dictated or depicted persons who once uh, labeled themselves as Protestants and staunch believers in Christ, uh, but now had fallen away from the faith. When I shared this information, Dr. Richardson, with the pastors that I was having lunch with at the time, Pastor Bob Davis um, from Saginaw, Michigan, who was a politician, uh, he facetiously said, Jack, uh, the approval rating of Jesus is dropping real fast. And while those of us who heard that comment, we chuckled at the time, I got to be honest and tell you, church, that when I got back to my hotel uh, later that night, uh, his comment and that article that I read started bothering me. It, it, uh, it bothered me, coach, that um, Christianity seemingly is losing and uh, secularism is seemingly winning. It, it bothered me um, that Christianity is trending downward. And, and, and it bothered me that as good as the Lord has been to each and every one of us, uh, that seemingly his approval rating uh, is dropping. And therefore, the Lord, he placed this word, Darrell, on my heart. And I wanted to talk about this today because I, I, I want to serve notice on the world. And I want to serve notice on, on those of you who may be under the sound of my voice. Um, that regardless of who may be leaving, I've made up my mind. I'm staying with the Lord. In, 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 in fact... Um, I, I'm taking the position that, uh, that Peter uh, did in the Gospel of John, chapter uh, number 6, verse 66 through 69. Uh, there's a scripture in John, chapter 6, verse 66, uh, a time in the ministry of Jesus Christ uh, when Jesus was losing his popularity. Uh, there's a scripture, stay with me, in John 6, verse 66, at the time uh, when people were uh, defecting from um, Jesus. Valanda, he uh, he opened blinded eyes and turned water to wine, cast out devils, raised the dead. But there came a time uh, in the ministry of Jesus Christ uh, when people were seeking other options. People uh, were looking for something hip and looking for something new and current and something different. The Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 66, um, that from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more um, with him. And when Jesus in verse 67 saw uh, people leaving him, he, he didn't get upset about it, um, but he turned, verse 67 says, to his disciples, uh, and he asked them a relevant question. He said uh, to the 12, will ye also go away? And I like Peter's answer in verse 68. Um, Simon Peter turned to the the Lord and said, Lord, uh, where else shall we go? Uh, you have the words to eternal life. And we believe um, that thou art the 
Christ, uh, the son of the living God. In other words, Peter turned to Jesus and, and says, Lord, I, I don't care who else leave. Uh, I've made up my mind that you've been so good to me. I'm staying with you. And I want to talk about that this morning because I believe I'm talking to somebody uh, this morning, this afternoon, rather, who ought to make up in your mind um, that even though you've had difficulties this year, it's been rough. Um, this year, you've gone through transition. Um, this year, you've lost some loved ones this year. I want to talk to someone who needs to make up in your mind that even though uh, others are doing other things and going other places, uh, you've made up in your mind that you are staying uh, with the Lord. I want to talk to somebody in this house uh, who needs to make that declaration uh, this morning that come hell or high water, uh, no matter the bills you have to pay and the burdens you have to carry and the tears, you may have to cry in the floors, you may have to walk the mountains, you may have to scale the valleys, you may have to turn through. I want to talk to somebody in this house who's made up in your mind, Lord, I'm staying. With, am I talking to you in this house? If that's you, tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm staying with the Lord. I mention this because that's the aim of the penman of this particular passage this morning. Uh, the writer of Hebrews, he's writing um, this letter um, to these converted Christians who are struggling uh, to stay committed to Christ. Uh, but the writer of Hebrews, his aim in verse 14 is to get um, his listening audience um, to hold fast to their um, profession. And I want to kick off evangelism emphasis months um, with some reasons as to why um, you and I um, should stay uh, with the Lord. The first reason I, I see um, that we ought to stay with the Lord uh, is found right there in verse 15. Uh, we ought to stay with the Lord, number one, uh, because the Lord uh, is acquainted uh, uh, with our problems. In fact, if you're taking notes, uh, you need to write that down, that the Lord, uh, he's acquainted. The Lord, uh, he knows our problems. The Lord, the Lord know uh, what we're going through. In fact, um, just nudge your neighbor beside you and tell neighbor uh, he's acquainted with our problems. I'm putting emphasis um, this morning, Booney, on the word acquainted and, and not on the word aware uh, because I believe there's a difference between somebody just being aware of what you're going through and being acquainted uh, with what you're going through. Uh, when people are just aware, uh, they recognize where you are uh, but don't necessarily relate to where you are. Uh, when people are aware uh, with what you're going through, they can fathom it but they're not familiar with it. Uh, when people are just aware where, uh, they may have learned of your pain, but they have not lived your pain. Uh, when people are just aware, um, they are conscious of what you're going through, but they can't comprehend what you're going through. Uh, when people are just aware, um, they can perceive your hurt, but they cannot has not participated uh, in your hurt. But we serve the kind of God, church, uh, that's not just aware of what we're going through, uh, but he is acquainted uh, with what we're going through. In fact, um, there's no issue that we can have. There's no problem um, that we can have that the Lord uh, cannot identify with what we're going through. Uh, every time we cry tears, uh, uh, he identifies with our tears because John 11 says uh, uh, that he wept himself. Uh, when friends, are y'all hearing me today? Uh, when friends uh, walk away from us, uh, he can relate to that because disciples uh, walked away from uh, him. When people stab uh, us in the back. Uh, he can relate to that because he was stabbed in his side. Uh, when people um, criticize us and call us everything except a child of God, uh, Jesus can relate to that because people called him uh, everything except who he was, uh, which was uh, the child of God. And so I have discovered uh, that when I'm coming to a decision in my life, I'm going uh, to stay uh, with the Lord uh, because people, uh, they may want to help you but the truth of the matter is uh, everyone uh, can't relate to what you're going through. Oh, we have friends in our life and those friends derail. I uh, want to be there for us. Uh, those friends uh, want to support us. Uh, those friends want to be our confidant. Those friends uh, want to be there to help bear our burdens. Uh, but if the truth be told, uh, if it's not your heart being broken, uh, you don't know how I feel. Uh, the truth of the matter is uh, if it wasn't your father, you don't know how I feel. Uh, the truth 
truth of the matter is, uh, if it's not these tears you're crying, uh, you don't know what I'm going through. But I thank God today, church, that whenever uh, we're going through trial uh, and tribulation, uh, there's somebody named Jesus uh, that we can steal away and talk to uh, because uh, he knows uh, what we're going through. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I may be talking to somebody right now uh, who's watched celebrities and uh, entertainers and you've seen the position that they've taken. Uh, but as for me, I don't care what celebrity uh, is turning to Scientology. I'm sticking uh, with the Savior. I don't care uh, what person uh, uh, is giving in to the culture. Uh, I'm staying uh, with the Christ. Uh, I don't care what cult comes along. Uh, I'm staying uh, with what got me through many dangers, toils, and snares. Uh, and if Jesus was good for big mama and daddy, uh, if Jesus was good uh, for mother and father, if Jesus has brought me this far, I'm depending on the Lord uh, to take me all the way. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, stay with the Lord. Stay with the Lord. That's a worry for somebody under the sound of my voice right now. For someone who may be tempted um, to try other things. Someone who may be tempted um, to try other fads and cliques and clubs. Uh, I'm talking to somebody right now in this church. Uh, for somebody right now who may be tempted um, to try something else that's popular. Can I suggest to somebody that there is a way uh, that seems right unto man. Uh, but the end thereof uh, is destruction. Uh, I want to suggest to somebody in this house. Uh, stray this the way and narrow is the entrance uh, that leads to eternal life. Uh, oh, help me, God. Uh, everything that's popular is not right. Y'all ain't talking to me in this house. And, and we're living in a culture uh, that celebrates wrong and criticize. Oh, God, I lost all my aim. I'm going to kill a devil in this house. Uh, we're living in a culture now um, that celebrates wrong uh, and criticize uh, what's right. It's something wrong uh, with the culture uh, when one person can be celebrated for being the first open uh, gay athlete uh, uh, and a sports commentator can be criticized uh, for calling wrong, wrong and right, right. It's something wrong uh, with the culture uh, when people who stand on the word of God uh, is criticized uh, and Folk that acquiesce to the culture is celebrated. Oh, I done lost all my amens. Uh, I, I knew I wouldn't get much help here because uh, we want to be popular. I, I knew I wouldn't get eight, much amens uh, because we want to be with the in crowd. But can I suggest that God never called us to be popular. Uh, he called us to be peculiar. Uh, he says in 1 Peter, uh, you are a peculiar people. Uh, he never told me to fit in, uh, to get in. Uh, he told me to stand out because I've been called out. Uh, he never told me to fit in. Uh, he didn't say I was the world. Uh, he said I was the salt of the world. Uh, he told me I was the light of the world. Tell somebody, stay with the Lord. Stay with the Lord. Stay with the Lord. I'm, I'm staying. And I'm staying with the Lord. Number one, because he's acquainted with my problems. Can I preach it like I feel it? When I can't talk to nobody else, I can talk to him. When nobody else understands, I can talk to him. And even when my burdens are so overwhelming, I can't even muster up words to say. He understands my groans. I wish I had a prayer, praying church. He, even when I don't, 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 don't even know what to say, just nod my head. He understands what my nodding means. Even when I can't even nod and just wave, he understands what the waving of my hand means. Even when I just sit there and tears stream down my eyes, he understands what the tears mean. And so push come to shove, I have made a decision. I'm staying with the Lord. Pastor, why are you staying with the Lord? Call him staying with the Lord. Because number one, we don't have the kind of high priest that can't be touched with our infirmities. That, 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 that means he feels my frustration. That, that, that means that he's touched by my tears. That means he's moved by my maladies. Are y'all hearing me? That, that means he understands um, what I'm going through. Tap three people, tell a neighbor, the Lord understands. And that's why when I talk to him, I don't have to sugarcoat the matter because he understands. When I go to God, I, I don't have to go to him pretending to be somebody else. I can go to him and just tell him what I want because the Lord, I don't have to sugarcoat the matter because the Lord understands. 
understands my tears, my trials, my trouble. He even understands my temptations. Y'all ain't talking to me in this house. He understands my weaknesses. That's what that word infirmities in verse 15 mean. That word uh, infirmities in verse 15. Are y'all hearing me? Uh, it, it doesn't mean the text says we don't have the kind of high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our uh, infirmities. Somebody shout infirmities. That word infirmities in verse 15, uh, it, it doesn't mean sicknesses. Uh, but the word infirmities in verse 15, it means uh, weaknesses. It, it means my struggles. When, when I... When I struggle, and, and don't look at me that way, all of us struggle. <laughs> uh, in, in fact, touch your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you too, you too, you, you, you're struggling. Your, your, your struggle uh, may not be like my struggle, but all of us, I guess I, ain't, I don't have no help in this house. Uh, you, you, you got some struggles, baby, that when God um, saved you, he didn't take away all those things that you were struggling with. Y'all ain't hearing me. I'm talking to somebody right now. Uh, you brought your struggle with you to church. You, you're struggling uh, uh, with something. I guess I'll preach to myself. You have a struggle. And every now and then I went to God. I said, God, why have you not delivered me from all of my struggles? And God says, no, because if I delivered you from all your struggles, uh, Paul would have a problem with me because I didn't deliver Paul from all of his struggles. The Lord is going to leave a thorn in your flesh. God help me God. But I praise God that the Lord understands what I'm struggling with. Those private proclivities. Those habitual habits. When you are craving stuff that your flesh craves. You ought to thank God. You can go to God because God understands your desires. God, I feel like preaching in this house. He understands. He understands my problems. He's acquainted with my problems. But not only am I staying with the Lord because he is aware of my, he's acquainted with my problems. I'm staying with the Lord because he gives, he's accessible to all people. L look at verse 16. Verse 16 says that we can come to the throne boldly. We can come to the throne boldly. Are y'all hearing me? Um, 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 Jesus is accessible to his people. Hmm. Uh, um, there, there's, look this way. There, there, there's a young man uh, by the name of George Bonner. Stay with me, church. His name is George Bonner. I heard about George Bonner for the first time many years from Dr. Richardson. He was teaching a class, and he mentioned George Bonner. Jo George Bonner, uh, he is the founder of this group called the Bonner Group which is a marketing research firm specializing in faith and culture. And, 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 and members of the Bonner group uh, asked persons who did not go to church uh, what was the reason why they did not go to church. And Deborah, you'd be surprised that one of the reasons why um, people stated uh, they didn't go to church uh, was uh, folk in the church. Yeah, I'm going there today. Um, 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 that, that one of the reasons why uh, um, people don't go to church uh, is because um, they're not welcomed by uh, church folk. Uh, that, that church folk uh, repel non-church folk. <laughs> that when a non-church folk come to church, uh, it's the church folk uh, that doesn't create an atmosphere of acceptance for them um, to come. Now, now, that thing bothered me because uh, uh, every church person was a person that wasn't always in church. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking to me in this house. And, and, and I can't understand how, how people that were not always churched, uh, who are now church, have a problem with the unchurched. I guess I'll try that one more time. I can't understand uh, how people who were not always church uh, now have a problem with people who are unchurched. And I, I struggled with that thing, uh, Tracy, until just the other day. I, I was watching CNN, Booney, and, and, and I, as I was watching CNN, uh, the Lord helped me understand this whole thing about how Christians can be a stumbling block to Christianity. I was watching CNN, true story, I was watching CNN just the other day, and CNN was featuring um, this special on heroes. 
and these heroes are ordinary people who do extraordinary things. And one of the heroes uh, that he, CNN was featuring uh, was this young lady uh, who, 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 who ran a, a, a animal rescue farm. Derek, um, she ran an animal rescue farm. And they specialized uh, in rescuing animals, uh, uh, recovering animals, uh, and then releasing animals uh, back into the wild. That, that arrested my attention just in the illustration or the alliteration. So I sit there watching um, this special on CNN, how this woman committed her life um, to the pres preservation of wounded animals. She would go find these animals in distress. Uh, she would rescue them, bring those animals to her farm, uh, repair them. Those animals would recover, and then she would release those. She's not trying to have a zoo. She's re release these animals back into the wild. But I was watching CNN, and what was interesting, church, was this, that one of the birds uh, that was injured in the wild, uh, that was rescued uh, and brought to her farm, uh, while that bird, uh, that rescued bird, uh, was being repaired, uh, another bird on the farm uh, jumped on that bird uh, and killed the bird at the farm. Now, that thing bothered me because uh, in my mind, I was thinking uh, that every bird on the farm uh, at one point was wounded. Uh, every bird on the farm uh, had to be rescued. Uh, every bird on the farm was being repaired. Every bird on the farm was trying to recover. Every bird on the farm was about to be released. But here's a bad bird that jumped on another bird, not in the wild, but jumped on the bird at the farm. And as I sat there watching CNN, the spirit came back to me and revealed this text. That's what happened in the church. We got folk in the church who used to be wounded in the world, that God re rescued you, brought you into the church, uh, repaired you, and here it is, uh, some other wounded saint uh, trying to come to church, uh, and as soon as they come to church, uh, we get bad bird believers uh, jumping on members, uh, trying to poison uh, whom God is trying to protect. Ah, uh, I, I, I knew I wasn't going to get a whole lot of amens. Because I'm probably talking about you. Oh, God, let me preach this house this morning. But I, I want to serve notice on somebody in this house that it ought not be anybody, anything in anybody in this church but a heart full of gratefulness because you remember how God rescued you. It ought to be nothing but joy in your spirit when you see a new convert come to church. Help me, God, because you remembered how wounded you are in the world. It ought not be nothing but joy in your spirit when you see a new convert walk down these aisles uh, because you remember how wounded you were and God reached down and rescued you and so now the question is answered because now I know why I know why ministries are not growing the ministries are not growing not because there's no mantle on the ministry but it's not growing because the members in the ministry God, I'm going to kill a devil in this house. You want to know why the choir can't grow? It's the choir members in the choir. You want to know why the usher ministry can't grow? It's the ushers on the usher ministry. You want to know why the ministry's in the church? You ain't got to say amen. Won't grow? It's the ministry members in the ministry. Here we have a new person trying to join a ministry. They ain't coming for gossip and foolishness. In fact, they just got here. They don't know nothing about who's dating who. But here is some person already in the ministry folk don't come trying to figure out who the pastor dating trying to figure out who's sleeping with who trying to figure out who's the latest 411 I didn't come for that I want to know is there a word from the Lord I'm joining the ministry because he saved my soul and I want to serve. Oh, but as soon as I join the ministry, now I'm getting the dirt. I'm getting the, 
I'm getting the juice. I'm, I'm getting the gossip. I'm getting the rumors. I'm getting the, I'm getting the lies. I'm getting, the, I'm getting the scandal. I'm getting the back news. In fact, I'm getting so much so uh, it's making me change my position about the church. It's making me change my position about the men of God. It's making me change how I look at the pastor. It's making me change my commitment to tithing and giving. It's making me change my commitment about the worship. I, I was on fire till I got here. I was. I love the pastor. I love the church until I joined the ministry. And when I joined the ministry, I started hearing all kind of foolishness. But I want you to know, church, that God is not pleased. God will judge every liar. God will judge every slanderer. God will judge every rumor spreader. God will help me somebody because his children's lives are at stake. Can I preach this thing like I feel it? Folk love Jesus, but don't like church. They, 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 they love Jesus. They, they, they don't like church. Because when I get to church, I just can't worship. I, I, I just want to. I just want to serve. I, I, I can't even serve without you pointing out. Hey, you, you, ha, have you heard? I wish I, listen, you, you, you can look at me all you want. We're going to kill a devil in this house today. We're going to kill a devil in this service. I'll say it again. We're going to kill a devil in this house, in this in the service because I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. God ain't pleased with it. And if I hear about it, we're going to kick folk out of ministry because the ministry is too important to allow parasitic poisonous people to try to pollute what God is trying to do. God is working, trying to save. God is using these preachers and ministers and evangelism, evangelizers, trying to get folk into the body of Christ. And as soon as they get here, they meet poisonous people. But the text says, we have access to Christ, which means this, watch this now, which means this, that even if I can't join your clique, I can join Christ. It, it, it means, even if I can't join your circle, your gossiping circle, talking about she don't even look all that, like, who cares what you think? Even if I can't join your space, Jesus says, I can come boldly. I wish I had a praying church. So when I think about the acceptance that God gives a sinner like me, when I think about the acceptance that the Lord says, I can still come boldly. Me who's made some mistakes. Me who hadn't dotted every I. Me who hadn't crossed. Maybe I'm just talking about me now. Me who hadn't crossed every T. Me who's lied, who's cheated, who's stolen. Me who's been through divorce. God says, Pastor, yes, you, you can still come. And so you want to know why I serve the Lord? I serve the Lord because he's given me unconditional acceptance. Tell your neighbor you got access. I got access. I got. I, I got access. I'm, the, the, the text says that we can come to the throne boldly. Someone shout! You can come boldly. Now, now let me let me teach. The, the, the text says we we can come to the throne boldly. We, we can get all the way to the throne. Please stay with me. Trust, I, I promise I'm almost done. The text says, now let us come boldly to the throne. The, the text says, Marsha, we can make it all the way back to the throne. Gosh, y'all ain't feeling me. I don't have to stop in the aisle of the court. But, but, but I, can, 
I, I, I can make it all. Okay, okay, let me see if I can teach this morning. Uh, um, the, the, the temple had different sections, and in, and in the temple, uh, um, that, that everybody couldn't worship uh, in, 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 in certain sections of the temple. Uh, um, there, was a, there was a section called the, the court of the Gentiles, which were uh, the outer section that you had to be a Gentile. And if you were not a Gentile, if you were a Gentile, you had to worship there, male or female. Uh, if you were a Gentile, meaning a non-Jew, uh, you had to worship right here. Uh, but if you were not a Gentile but a Jew, uh, you had a little greater access. Uh, uh, but if you were a male, uh, you couldn't worship with the women. And so uh, there was a section for male Jews uh, uh, and a section for female Jews because uh, even though Jews had greater access than Gentiles, uh, the men and the women could not worship together. But uh, if you were a priest or a Levite, uh, you had even greater access. Uh, that meant that you didn't have to stop uh, in the court of the Gentiles. Uh, you can go further than the regular male Jewish worshiper and the further than the regular female worshiper. Uh, uh, you can go further, but you couldn't make it to the holies of holies where the throne was. Uh, you had to be the high priest to make it back to the holies of holies. Uh, are y'all hearing me? It, it was in the holies of holies where the throne was, uh, which represented the presence of the God. Uh, and so here are these poor Gentiles uh, that was way away from the throne. Uh, here are these male uh, Jews and female Jews uh, that had no access to the throne. Uh, here are priests and Levites that had no access to the throne. Uh, oh, but the text says we can come all the way back to the throne and you want to know why I worship the Lord I worship the Lord because he's knocked down every barrier that means this if the pastor don't pray for me I can go to the throne myself that means if I can't make it to church next Sunday I can go on my knees in my bedroom and make it to the throne that means if my prayer partner failed to pray for me that means I can get on my knees I can talk to God for myself and make it to the throne is there anybody besides me who can give God crazy praise because you know uh, that the reason why God has blessed you the way he's blessed you is because you have made it to the throne in your life. Uh, am I talking to somebody over here who can give God crazy praise because you recognize the devil would have taken you out a long time ago but the difference is uh, you had access to the throne and when the trouble got hard, your mountains got high, your burdens got heavy, what you did was uh, you said Lord take me to the king and you went on your knees and went to the throne of God. So lest I hold you too long this morning, you want to know why I'm staying, sir? I'm staying because God has given me access. Someone shout access. I'm staying with the Lord, number one, because the Lord, he's acquainted with my problems. I'm staying with the Lord, secondly, because the Lord has given access to his people. But the reason thoroughly I'm staying with the Lord finally is because the Lord is able to provide. I wish I had a witness in this house who knew that God was a provider. Come on, Alan, just touch somebody besides your neighbor. He's a provider. He's a provider. Now, most times, most times, stay with me. Most times when we talk about God uh, providing, we're, we're talking about material possessions. <laughs> m m most times when we bless God for being a provider, most times we're blessing God for being the kind of God that provide material things. And he does provide material things. But I discovered that his best provision has nothing to do with possession. Because somebody know that the best things in life, you can't even buy with money. Oh, I know. You bought a nice house, but you can't buy a nice home. Oh, I know you bought a nice bed, but you can't buy a good night's sleep. Oh, I know you buy medicine, but you can't buy good health. <laughs> Preach, boy. Oh, I know that you bought your dinner, that you cooked for the day, but you can't buy an appetite. Because the best things in life, help me somebody, you can't buy with money. Well, when you look at this text, this text teaches us that God is a provider. Tell your neighbor he's a provider. Well, look at the two things, and as I close, that God provides in the text. Number one, the Bible says we can come to the throne, and when we get to the throne, number one, we can obtain mercy. God, somebody give God praise for his mercy. God, God I, 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 I could just preach all day. I promise I'm almost done, but I, I get happy thinking about the mercy of, of God. I, I get happy thinking about how, how merciful God is because, number one, we discover that there's no stature 
uh, yeah, of limitations on God's mercy. Uh, in, in fact, Psalm 100, uh, verse 4 and 5 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord, yeah, he, he, he's good and his mercy uh, is everlasting and his truth uh, endureth unto all. <laughs> Are y'all with me today? Uh, generation. Psalm 118, verse 1 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he's good, for uh, his mercy endureth for uh, ever. Somebody shout mercy. Some of y'all are not praising God for mercy because you don't quite understand what mercy is. Let me say it this way. Uh, mercy uh, is God uh, withholding stuff from us uh, that we deserve. <laughs> yeah, I I'll try it one more time. Mercy uh, is God withholding stuff from us uh, that we deserve. I'm talking to somebody like me uh, who know uh, you deserve to be dead right now. You, 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 you deserve uh, to have lost your mind by now. <laughs> uh, you, 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 you deserve uh, to be homeless by now. You, you deserve to have cancer by now. Uh, yeah, you, 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 you deserve, amen, uh, to be out, out, outdoors sleeping under a bridge right now. You deserve uh, to be locked up in somebody's jail uh, right now. But you ought to thank God uh, that when justice tried to have its way, uh, mercy pleaded your case. When God justice went to God and, and, and told God, God, you ought to lock them up because they broke a law. Uh, mercy stepped in and pleaded your case. When justice said, God, uh, uh, you, he deserves to die, uh, mercy said no put them on the wake up list this morning when justice said uh, they don't deserve another chance uh, they deserve this or that uh, mercy stepped in and said no God uh, I, I give them one more chance I, I'm talking to somebody right now who ought to slap fire with your neighbor and say neighbor thank God for uh, his mercy his mercy uh, his mercy his mercy endures forever uh, his mercy I uh, watch over my children his mercy wash over my household uh, uh, his mercy helped my mama and my daddy uh, his mercy got me through the rough spots of my life. Uh, uh, his mercy was with me when I was making mistakes. Uh, uh, his mercy kept me when I was going astray. Uh, his mercy kept me when I was rebellious. His mercy kept me when I was doing my own thing. Uh, uh, his mercy kept me when I was trying to do everything except serve him. Uh, his mercy kept me when I was selling weed and using weed and drinking liquor. Uh, his mercy kept me when I was club hopping. Uh, his Am I talking to somebody in this house who ought to give God a 30 second praise uh, just for his mercy. Well, but if you can't praise God for uh, his mercy, you ought to praise God for his grace. Uh, because the Bible says uh, we can come to the throne and when we, when we get to the throne uh, not only can we obtain mercy but when we get to the throne uh, we can obtain some grace. Uh, somebody shout favor. Uh, that's what grace is. Uh, uh, grace is God's uh, unmerited favor. Well, uh, if mercy is God, uh, uh, withholding things uh, uh, from us that we didn't deserve, uh, we deserved. Uh, of grace as God, uh, giving us things uh, that we did not deserve. Uh, if mercy is God, uh, withholding uh, stuff from us uh, that we did deserve. Uh, grace is God giving us uh, stuff that we did not deserve. Uh, if you can't shout over mercy, uh, you ought to go to crazy for God, uh, uh, for his grace. Uh, if you can't praise him for mercy, uh, you ought to run around the church for his grace uh, because I'm talking to somebody uh, who oh God praise uh, just for his grace. Uh, I'm talking to somebody uh, who oh God praise uh, because you're driving a car. Uh, you got by grace. Uh, living in a house. Uh, preach boy. You got by grace. Uh, raising children. Uh, you got by grace. Uh, staying in a home. Uh, you got by grace. Uh, wearing clothes. Uh, purchased by grace. Uh, a child in college uh, sustained by grace uh, elderly parents uh, looked over by grace uh, rebellious children uh, taken care of by grace uh, turn to your neighbor uh, and tell a neighbor uh, this praise right here uh, is for his grace uh, not just his mercy uh, am I talking to somebody uh, in fact I told the Lord uh, if you don't give me nothing else uh, if you keep giving me uh, grace in the morning uh, mercy at night uh, mercy in the morning grace at night if you keep giving me grace and mercy and mercy and grace grace and mercy mercy and grace I won't complain you ain't got to give me a car give me your grace give me your mercy you don't have to give me a house give me your grace give me your mercy you don't have to give me the job give me your grace give me your mercy 
I don't need a husband. Give me your grace. Give me your mercy. I don't need a wife. Give me your grace. Give me your mercy. Because if you give me your grace and your mercy, I can make it. I don't know who I'm talking to, but turn to your neighbor and look your neighbor right in the face and say, neighbor, I don't know what you want from God, but tell a neighbor, if you really want to be hooked up tonight, ask for God to give you his grace and his mercy. Good evening, y'all. I held you too long, but before I go, can I close this way? Some folk choose silver. Some folk choose gold. These things they treasure and forget about their soul. But I, 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 I decided a long time ago to make Jesus my choice. Find a prayer partner, take him by the hand, look him in the face, and say, neighbor, I know it's been rough, but stay with him. Say, neighbor. I know it's been hard, but stay with him. Oh, you ain't doing it. Talk to somebody. Say, neighbor, I know you had to cry, but stay with him. Tell a neighbor, you had mountains to climb, valleys to tunnel through, but stay with him. Come on, talk to him. Tell a neighbor, I know mama died, but stay with him. I know daddy died, but stay with him. I know you got laid off, but stay with him. Been divorced, but stay Stay with him, been bankrupt, but stay with him. Got cancer, Walter, but stay with him. Got trial, but stay with him. Because if you stay with him, he'll stay with you. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Find three people, tell a neighbor, he been too good. I'ma stay with him, he been too kind. I'ma stay with him, he been merciful. I'ma stay with him, he been compassionate. I'ma stay with him, he been forgiving. I'ma stay with him, he been loving. I'ma stay with him, he's given me chance after 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 chance, I am gonna stay with the Lord. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Yes! 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 Stay, stay. Come on, top three people. Come, stay, 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 stay. Stay, stay, stay. Oh, you ain't doing it. Tap three more people. Stay, 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 stay. Come on, tap them, tap them, tap them. Tap them, tap them, tap them. Stay, 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 stay. Step on the chest. Pass yourself on the chest. Come on, pass yourself on the chest. I'm staying. I'm staying with Pastor. Why? Why are you staying? He's acquainted. And he 
knows my problems. He knows my proclivities. He knows my pain. He knows my plight. He's acquainted with me. I don't have the kind of high priest that can't be touched with my feelings. I don't care what the Stoics believe. They, they, they believe that God didn't have feelings. Oh, but I thank God. Marvin, he knows what I'm going through. Danny, when you can't talk to nobody, you can talk to him. So I'm staying. But then he's given me then of an acceptance. He's given me access. That he allows me to still come to him. He, he gives me access all the way to the throne. Folk, folk, know what you've been through. They want to cut you off. You have no more access. Oh, but we serve a loving God that says you still have access. Thank you, Lord. Your actions hadn't stopped your access. I can still come all the way to the throne. And then when I get there, he gives me mercy. And he gives me grace. He gives me mercy. He keeps stuff from me that I deserve. He gives me grace. He gives stuff to me that I don't deserve. And that's why, church, I've made up in my mind, I'm staying with the Lord. Pastor is coming. Pastor is coming. For your goodness and your mercy. Toward us, for your goodness and your mercy toward us, for your goodness and your mercy. Look at your neighbor, said neighbor.